Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Dockett from Psychotherapy Networker and with me today is Stephen Snyder. Welcome Stephen. Hi Lauren, thanks for having me here. Stephen is a sex and relationship therapist, a professor of psychiatry, and the author of the book Love Worth Making, How to Have Ridiculously Great Sex in a Long-Lasting Relationship. Um, and Stephen is also the author of a piece in the current issue of the magazine that I think lots of therapists who are not themselves sex therapists can relate to. It's about what to do when you find yourself in the position of being an accidental sex therapist to a client who's having some sex woes. So Stephen, let's jump right in and okay, good. start with your very first piece of advice for an accidental sex therapist you write about whose client is trying to figure out why she doesn't feel anything during sex um, with her husband, which obviously could mean a lot of different yes. things. You say we should always be sure to ask about all three parts of sex at the start when yes. we get a question like this. What are these three parts and briefly, why do they matter? Okay. The three parts of sex are desire, arousal, and orgasm. They're kind of different from each other. When someone says they don't feel anything during sex, it could mean a desire problem, or an arousal problem, or sometimes an orgasm problem. And there's no way of knowing in advance, so you have to make sure you ask about all three so you're not missing anything. Arousal is the trickiest to ask about because it has a physical component and also a psychological component. Physical part is usually pretty obvious, but someone can be physically aroused, their body's ready for sex, but they not, might not be very psychologically involved at all. A lot of times that's what women mean when they say, I don't feel anything. Everything kind of physically works, but they feel like they're a million miles away. Mm -hmm. so clients usually lack a vocabulary to describe the psychological aspect of arousal. So as therapists, one of our main jobs is to give them the right words so they can really understand what they're feeling. Okay. Now, it's like, you also talk in the, in the article about how psychological arousal itself yes. often makes for the very best sex. It's something you call, I love this, you call getting dumb and happy. Yes. Um, so tell us about the keys to that psychological arousal that clients need to be aware of. Sure. I decided to write about this because I couldn't find it anywhere. You know, Masters and Johnson spent about a decade in the 50s and 60s studying the physical parts of arousal, blood flow, heart rate, muscle tone, that sort of thing. But no one ever really has spent much time getting really specific about what happens to your mind when you're aroused. I tell clients in my office, there are three hallmarks of real authentic psychological arousal. This is entirely subjective. Number one, absorption. When you're psychologically aroused, you get absorbed in the experience. Phone rings, you don't really care who's calling, right. you just want them to go away. If all goes well, you lose a certain amount of IQ points when you're aroused. <laughs> good sex makes you dumb and really good sex can make you really stupid. Um, your time sense can get a bit distorted. People who are sexually aroused tend to arrive late to meetings if they arrive at all. Mm -hmm. Number two, Regression. You regress to a more infantile state of mind. If all goes well, you become momentarily more selfish, more self-absorbed, more immature. You may feel deeply connected to your partner, but you really don't want to hear all about how their day went. You just want them to give you their total attention and make nice noises and tell you that everything's wonderful. <laughs> Number three, validation. When you're deeply aroused, you have a feeling of, yes, 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 that's, that's me. That's where I really live. This is where I feel most deeply and authentically myself. So if you add that all up, as I usually tell clients, what you're really looking for is to feel dumb and happy. That's the es essence of psychological arousal. Okay. I love it. And lastly, Stephen, in sex therapy, you find that people will often come into session certain, and I think this is, it sounds very common to me too, that sexual problems that they're having in their relationships are attributable solely to them, that something yeah. is wrong with them. So how best to address this interpretation that people often have? In my book, I talk a lot about what I've called the sexual self, which is a deeply immature part of the self, as we already mentioned. Sex is basically infantile, and it touches a part of us that's vulnerable and immature and easily hurt. 
So your sexual self doesn't cope very well with disappointment. And we're all vulnerable to feeling deep feelings of shame, like there's something wrong with us, whenever anything goes wrong in the bedroom. And shame, as you know, tends to be a vicious cycle. The more shame you feel, the more you tend to disconnect from your partner. And the more that happens, the harder it can be to reconnect, which is the main thing that helps with shame. Sometimes it's helpful for clients to learn that everyone is vulnerable to feeling shame around sex. There's just this deep connection between sex and the self. Sex just seems to get us where we live, where we're most vulnerable. Thank you, Stephen, for that um, explanation and, and for the great advice. Accidental sex therapists everywhere, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone, be sure to check out Stephen's book and his current article in the magazine, which is aptly titled The Accidental Sex Therapist. Thanks so thank much, you. Stephen. Thank you very much.